Hey, Matt here. I wanted to talk about um, setting up a server if you wanted to use it with Scrapebox. So Scrapebox would obviously run from Windows, uh, run on Windows, and they can run from your home computer, home internet connection, that sort of thing. Uh, but at some point you may want to purchase a VPS or an actual dedicated server, depending on what exactly you want to do with um, those programs. So the known tested ones that they work with are Windows 2003 and Windows 2008. Now there's different revisions and service packs of all that sort of stuff. Um, and there's different things you want to take into account depending on what you have. For my dedicated servers, I always set it up with Windows 2008, and at the current, I use revision R2 because it's the newest at the time of this video. Um, and I like how Windows 2008 R2 functions, and I usually use 64-bit because it's more efficient, even though Scrapebox is only a 32-bit application at the moment. So, um, let's just jump right in and have a look. Whenever you get your server, you're going to get some details. Um, it'll be something to the tune of an IP address and then a username which is usually administrator I probably spelled that wrong no, okay we're good um, and then you'll also have a password which is usually some random string of characters and numbers and all that sort of wonderful stuff so um, what you're gonna do is obviously it wouldn't be that but you're gonna take this um, IP address and administrator and um, your password and you're going to um, go to start and then you're going to go to this is on your home computer um, in my case I'm running Windows 7 so it's all programs and then mine is under accessories and then choose remote desktop connection and it'll bring up something here um, what you're going to do is you're going to type in your IP address here whatever it was and then you're going to hit options and here you're going to type in your username and then you can choose allow to save credentials if you want so that you don't have to type in your password and username every time then you can save that to your desktop as a shortcut um, you can also adjust the display settings um, ideally if you want to run it full screen you're going to set these display settings to the same display settings you're using on your current monitor that way everything is sized up and you don't have scroll bars to scroll the screen up and down and then you can choose local resources and that sort of thing um, and then programs and various things through here depending on your internet connection uh, and that sort of thing so you can mess with all the settings there uh, whether or not you want it to map drives and play sounds and all that um, and then the colors and whatnot. Um, but then under then you're going to hit connect. Now I've already connected to one. Use it'll ask you for server certificate and all that sort of stuff. You can go ahead and conti hit continue. Um, and then once you're in, um, it's going to look something like this. You're going to see a remote desktop connection. Um, I have mine to fit on the video here. These scroll bars. Um, if you size it to the same size as your desktop, you won't have that issue. When you first log in. Um, it'll probably pop up with a couple of different thing, screens. Um, usually you can close out of those. Um, there is one important thing specifically on Windows 2008, and I think it happens on Windows 2003 if you have like one of the newest versions. Um, but on Windows 2008, you'll see this little icon down here. This is Server Manager. You can also get to it from the Start menu. Um, it's under Administrative Tools, I believe, the uh, Server Manager. Anyways, if you click on that, there's this thing called IEESC, and what that does is, um, it, this may be in a different spot depending on the Windows that you're using, but again, on Windows 2008 R2, uh, it automatically blocks every single web page out there, and you have to add each and every single web page to a whitelist if you want to use it. Now, obviously, if you load up a list of a million URLs, you don't want to go through hand by hand and whitelist every single one of those URLs before you can deal with them with Scrapebox. So, um, just pop this open and turn it off both of them the user and administrator and turn it off and so now you're basically good to go for most server companies as far as being able to function with Scrapebox obviously you have to install it and activate it um, the next thing you want to do is go to the control panel and you're going to want to go to user accounts and you're going to want to change your password because unless you can remember the password they give you or you save it off I like to make something a little bit more user friendly for me but still highly secure so you type in the current password they gave you and then make up a new one in the password hit and change your password 
Another thing you want to do in the main control panel, um, this will vary based on your Windows version, is go to Appearance and then go to ch Change Screensaver and make sure this On Resume Display Log On Screen is unchecked. If you check that, after every X minutes that you specify over here, it's automatically going to go to Screensaver and lock the screen and you're going to have to manually punch in a password to get back in. On my servers, I leave them running. Um, I actually have a second monitor and I kick all my server windows over to my second monitor and I leave them running full screen all the time and then I just go back and forth between them um, or you could just minimize it, that sort of thing. If you're not always going to stay connected and you're going to disconnect as soon as you get done, this step doesn't really matter. But if you want to stay connected all the time, uh, it's annoying to have to punch the password in a dozen times a day every time you log on. So I just leave that unchecked. And that's pretty much about the whole of how I go through and set up a server. Um, I have multiple dedicated servers, so I'll set up um, like an FTP type server, only secure, on uh, the various servers for transferring files between them because it's faster to transfer files between servers over their own internet connections because obviously they're faster than my home connection. Um, that's not a necessary step at all, and if you only had one server, it would be, you know, completely pointless. Um, we won't go into that on this video. One thing that I did find handy that uh, took me a long time to figure out, just because I just didn't realize what I was doing, is if you hit Control C T on your keyboard, Control plus Alt plus the pause break key. That will toggle your remote desktop connection window bef between full screen and not. So I'm going to do it, and you won't be able to see it because of the video, but when I do this, you can see um, that my scroll bars went away because everything jumped out to full screen. And then when I come back, uh, there it is with the scroll bars um, and that sort of thing. So um, if you wanted to toggle between full screen and not, you can do that. Um, otherwise, um, pretty straightforward. You're going to have your uh, desktop connection shortcut whenever you want it. You click on it, it'll bring up this screen here, and it's a Windows desktop, just like everything you have. Uh, another handy thing on the Windows is uh, Control Alt Delete, oftentimes, depending on how you have things configured, will bring up the local um, options on your computer. So, like if you wanted to run Task Manager or shut down the server or something like that. Um, it's going to bring up your local stuff, not on the server. So you can hit Start and this Windows Security option. And what that does is it brings up your lock computer, log off, change password, that sort of thing, and Start Task Manager. And so um, you, it's helpful a lot of times to see Task Manager and to see performance um, and your services and processes or whatever. I like to monitor... Um, my performance depending on how and my networking depending on how many things I have going and uh, you can see this is a this server has a lot of cores so you can actually grab a hold of this and uh, bring it out here so you can see all the different processing cores more accurately at a glance uh, and then your percentage and your your memories over here as well and then networking is nice um, I run gigabit networking and you can see your percentage running down here when you're doing stuff so um, you know, you don't, if you're on a 100 megabit server, uh, you might get close to 100 megabit, but I mean, I re wouldn't realistically expect on average to get over 60% or 60 megabit worth of connection. Uh, from my experience, just if things get clogged up, um, and am I, now that's not a figure that's necessarily applicable to all server companies. That's just the companies I've used, which is a very narrow scope. So don't take that one to the bank. Um, on my gigabit server, you know, I don't like to push it much over 300 to 400 megabit connection uh, just because um, at that point I usually have the processor maxed out anyways. And so you can kind of see what's going on over here, your percentage, and then your processor and that sort of thing. Maybe over the top for some users, but um, that's handy if you want to to uh, gauge that sort of stuff. And other than that, um, I don't really do anything uh, too different. A lot of times if you have your, um, well, I guess one other thing is I do map my local drive t uh, to the server. So if you're in the, when you're setting up your remote desktop connection on your home PC, um, one of the options is if you want to map any local hard drives to the server, and I have mine mapped, so this would be my server hard drive, and this would be my hard drive on my home PC, 
and when I click on that then it allows me basically to transfer files back and forth another thing you can do is um, if you have uh, files on your local desktop you can just click you can't drag them um, from your local desktop window to this remote server window but you can right click or control C on your local desktop and copy them essentially to the clipboard and then come over here and right click and click paste so if I wanted to take a uh, short cut off of um, my local desktop for instance of um, I'll just take a scrape box one here I'm uh, gonna let me see if I can make this so you can see this here we go over here we right click go to copy and then we bring up our server window back up um, and we right click over here and go to paste and it copies it there now obviously this shortcut is linked to my local desktop so it's not gonna work um, but if you had actual files that you wanted to uh, copy for you know whatever purposes it's easy to copy back and forth because you just right click copy and then you paste on your local desktop or vice versa and since I don't need this I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it but um, that's pretty much everything I have and use for a remote desktop connection